Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Chair of PTF, and all ministers here present, permanent secretaries, directors general, ladies and gentlemen of the press. The expanding laboratory and testing capacity all over the country and the growing community transmission rate both contribute to the increase in the number of COVID-19 positives we are observing in recent days. We have nevertheless not reached our testing targets as yet and therefore ask all persons who fit the case definition of fever, cough, sore throat, loss of sense of smell or taste to first use a mask or a face covering and find the nearest testing center. Those testing positive should report to the nearest treatment center in the interest of their own self-preservation. Complications, as you know, can arise suddenly, especially in cases of persons who have underlying illnesses. We shall include this in our social mobilization and community engagement messaging. We are working with National Primary Healthcare Development Agency to finalize plans on the engagement of existing community workers and agents to conduct house-to-house -house sensitization on COVID-19 at, com at community level, especially in the high burden local government areas of Nigeria, which have all been identified and have said about 20% of local government areas contribute nearly 60% of our COVID-19 positive cases. Nigeria has currently a total of 10,578 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the 30, 35 states of the Federal uh, Federation and the FCT, of which 3,122 have been treated successfully and discharged while well, we have sadly recorded 299 fatalities. The COVID-19 burden is, as we know, not evenly distributed within the country, with Lagos and Kano states bearing the highest burden. A team from the Federal Ministry of Health, led by the Executive Director of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, and comprising of doctors from the departments of family health, hospital services, and public health, and NCDC, is in Lagos on an appraisal visit during which a situation analysis will be conducted. The team will also visit the contiguous Ogun State on the same mission. The visits are in continuation of similar useful initiatives in the past to Kano, Katsina, Sokoto, Jigawa, Gombe, and Borno to share experience and ideas and align strategy and support each other. We continue to advocate for states to strengthen their response activities and have begun a program to strengthen the capacity of all federal health institutions in Nigeria to deal with COVID-19 challenges in their states by additional training, supplies, and equipment. Federal Medical Center Lokoja and the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital will be prioritized for deployment of gene expert machines as soon as the kits are available and validated. Citizens of Kogi and Cross River will no longer have shortage of the opportunity to be tested. Our observation is that states are at various levels of readiness and it is important to re-strategize to meet all citizens and need at their point of need. COVID-19 has long since become a global phenomenon affecting nearly all states of the world and all nations are working together and I urge all state authorities in Nigeria to accept the reality and also work with each other 
and the federal government and play their role in the strategy to keep our people safe. This includes decentralization that requires making a minimum of 300 isolation beds ready so that the national health system does not run out of COVID-19 bed spaces. As we have been advised by His Excellency the President, it is best to be fully prepared even if we don't have to use it. In this regard, the Federal Ministry of Health stands ready to support all states in their effort to build resilient and responsive systems for their citizens of their states. The FCT, for example, is no longer under dead space pressure, having been well supported with assets to meet all levels of care, security, and needs. There will therefore be no reason for COVID-19 positive persons to be outside of a designated isolation and treatment center, especially with the Disney Dome Isolation Center now ready to take cases. It will be headed in the introductory phase by the medical director of Iwa Specialist Hospital, one of the most experienced virus disease hospitals in Nigeria. The FCT is managing the IDU COVID treatment center with over 500 beds capacity. And this facility is ready. We have conducted an analysis of healthcare worker infections and identified critical areas of targeted intervention to include continuous updates and retraining. More than 13,000 health workers have been trained, which will reduce, result in reduced rate of infection especially infection in the line of duty. We are collaborating with states to cascade the training down to lower cadres or junior cadres of workers. A few weeks ago, I announced that Nigeria will participate in the COVID-19 drug trial, which the World Health Organization was leading, but partly suspended. After consultation with top Nigerian scientists of the Ministerial Expert Advisory Committee, I am advised that Nigeria has something to add to the body of knowledge around these trials, and I have therefore approved continuation of the trial as recommended under strong precautionary conditions to be built into them. The leadership of the ministry also had the first comprehensive briefing with the ministerial advisory panel of experts yesterday, led by the foremost virologist, Professor Oyewale Tobori, and we received a series of very useful advisories that will be discussed and shared with heads of our agencies and departments of the ministry. Finally, as we move into the next phase of easing of the lockdown, I urgently call on all Nigerians to take responsibility for ensuring that we actively play our role in ensuring that COVID-19 does not spike or bounce up as has been observed in many countries where lockdown was relaxed. It is important to bear in mind that this phase, more than lockdown itself, is in the hands of the people, more than in the hands of government. We must fight the spread of the disease by adhering more strictly than ever before to the various social guidelines which have been announced, published, and publicized. Please wear your face mask in public once you leave your house or even inside your house if you are not sure of the COVID-19 status of people you live with. Wear your mask on your face, not under your chin. It has no value under your chin. Be sensitive about respiratory hygiene, wash hands regularly, use sanitizers, observe physical distancing, Open your windows to let in fresh air whenever it is safe to do so. And thank you all for listening. <laughs>